Carter, the power Brian, who joins us every Monday. Normally not this early in the day, but we had to change some times. He was obliged to, to join us here. Good evening. Good, sir. Date night tonight for you. What's going on? T-ball. Game one. Oh, let's go. <laughs> yeah. T-ball. Day one. I just uh, hit my mic. That was my so man nice. gets home from school. I love he it. runs up to me and goes, it's time. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, what have I done? What have I created? I've created uh, a monster. He's already out there practicing. Okay, so, I mean, before I'm getting ready for the show, he's out there practicing. He's hitting off the tee. He's like, <laughs> he's hitting, and he goes, tank, tank, tank. <laughs> and I'm like, what have I done? I've created, I've created a monster. I, I I am really freaking excited. Uh, if he gets a hit, send me a video. I'm excited. Oh, he's going. Oh, he's going to get a hit. Well, yeah, yeah. I I would hope so uh, off the tee. <laughs> uh, if if not, you you would disown him. But no, uh, I would I wouldn't do that. But the problem that Ben has. So in case no one, everyone's wondering, my son Ben has a tee ball game today. When he swings it and he hits it hard, he goes blast. He starts running down the first base. He goes blasted, Daddy. Yeah. That one was blasted. And I'm like, dude, just run the first, get the first. It's gonna be okay. But I created a monster. I love it. Good luck, Ben. Yeah, good luck to to Ben. We'll we'll let you know how it goes. Carter Bryant joining us. Carter, there's been a lot of pursuit. Actually, you know what? Let me let me hold off on the DTs. I want to get to something with you because I know you do Power Hour NFL. Yeah. Did the common did the commanders screw up with this whole Jaden Daniels thing? In case you missed it, I mean, it looks like that that relationship might have soured, and the commanders might have been the one that that did it. Uh, have you been noticing this with with the, the LSU quarterback? Yeah, I I have, and there's going to be so many different reports about uh, how the top golf meeting went. What I will say is, I believe the commanders are going to pick Jaden Daniels number two I agree. overall. I agree. I, I don't fully believe this idea out there that Adam Peters, their general manager, is going to go with Drake May, even if he prefers Drake May. And even the people close to Adam Peters doesn't know what he's going to do. I think they're going to I take Jaden I think Jayden he's throwing Daniels. out smoke screens. Yes, I think they're taking Jaden Daniels number two overall. And I think the Patriots would – prefer Jaden Daniels um, at number three overall. I, I, I don't believe uh, Minnesota is going to have enough capital to get to number three if Jaden were to even fall uh, to that number three role. So wherever Jaden's going to go, he's going to be successful, even if that is not the destination he prefers over them all. Um, obviously, I would prefer him to go to Minnesota. That would be a great fit for him. But at this point, I would feel pretty good about these locations. I, I like Jaden at Washington. I think Malik will go to number six to the Giants, and I think BTJ will be in the middle uh, of round one, somewhere in that range. I, I tend to agree with that. I know that you hinted that you think he could fall to the Bills. Now, if he fall, if he goes there, watch out, buddy. I think that that's a yeah. great place for BTJ. All right, let's get to some LSU stuff because that – I mean – Team LSU current. stuff. Yeah. yeah, current. Uh LSU is in a hot pursuit over defensive tackles. I, I we talked last week that we knew that they were going to be going after him pretty hard. And here we are. Simeon Burrow, CJ West, uh Williams from TCU. Uh I, I don't even know what to ask. Other than who do you who would you take? Maybe if you if you looked at any of these guys, and are you confident? that they get one of them at least. Yeah, so um, I, I, I revealed this last night on the show, and I, I spoke in private to uh, Philip Bleedy, Bleedy uh, a few times. Who committed I did, to Auburn today. Who just, committed to Auburn. Right. So I, I didn't, you know, I, I had conversations with him, um, and I didn't, I mean, he was making a decision. I, I didn't want to sway the public perception of him one way or the other. So he goes to Auburn, and now – LSU, the pressure is just up to go get a player. I watched Barrow's uh, tape earlier today. Let me make sure I get this team name correct. It was against uh, Minnesota, so not the absolute best competition. Minnesota! Minnesota! Hey, you remember uh, the Joe Biden thing? Yes, yes, Minnesota! Yes. Anyway, continue. So, um, and, and he penetrated and made a lot of good plays. Pause. Uh, but he, he, <laughs> he, he did. He did. 
he's a penetrator. Uh, he he likes to get in the backfield and and make plays. Uh, so LSU desperately needs. <sighs> What I, I knew you would be the only one that would laugh at a simple word like penetrate. <laughs> penetrate, man. It's not the word. It's how you said it. He's a big-time penetrator, and I'm just like, oh, because oh, you I said know. pause before it, you know. Huh? 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 Okay. No, I, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I know you like Barrow. I, I like Barrow as well to Michigan State. C.J. West is is a very interesting player. Uh, You know, I watched him. I, I watched the Akron game of all games, the worst team he played against, and he made a few plays there. At this point, Blake, and I'm not watching Williams, uh, 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 Demonic Williams at a TC. I know I butchered his name, but I, I've I've not watched him yet. Um, what what I would tell you, though, is I do, I do think Barrow could help out in the SEC, and he would be uh, one of the better defensive linemen on this team right now. Uh, but as with all these defensive tackle prospects, uh, Blake, they're all very coveted at at this point. Their LSU is not the only team that wants multiple, not one, multiple uh, defensive tackles. So hopefully uh, it does go LSU's way. But I, I do agree with you. I do think Barrow can can play. So now that you need defensive tackles, there are guys that entered the portal: Jeremiah Hughes, Ryan Yates, uh, Connor Gelbreth. Who I mean, Carter that was what that was there. Jackson Howard. Yeah. I, 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 to be real with you, man, I'm not surprised by any of those at all. Uh, were you surprised to see any of those names into the portal? No, not not in the least bit. And this is what I would say to LSU fans that watch your show, watch my show, watch any show. Yes, we, we focus in on, on the guys that leave, right? Especially if they're only here for a year, right? Sometimes these decisions are mutual. But the bigger thing, Blake is if you compare LSU to other teams that have lost players, LSU, probably more so than most teams, have probably lost the fewest actual real contributors, right? right. This is not Walter Nolan, a dominant defensive tackle at Texas A&M, going for Texas A&M to Ole Miss, right? There's really only a few starting-level, big-time contributor uh, kinds of guys that have even left LSU in the modern day transfer portal era, right? Elias I mean, Ricks. The biggest one's got to be Elias Ricks. Yeah, Elias Ricks is really the only one, and that, and that made a, a lot of sense uh, uh, on everybody's end, right? right? Lance Hurd is definitely one that made a lot of sense because he wasn't starting, he wasn't going to start a tackle. And then Jack Fesh, I mean, he was deeper on the depth chart. I uh, got passed up by Kyron Lacey and a few others. So Outside of that, if you're an LSU fan, yes, the big-name transfers haven't come to LSU as much as you would like to. But they've really done a good job retaining what they what they have that uh, you would say are the big-time contributors. That is not the case at other SEC schools. You know, you talked about Philip Blitty, and I, I'm just going to add him. Isaiah Rakes also committed to Auburn. Look, I, I think that there are multiple teams in the SEC that need them, and they're processing guys. Now, let me let me just say this, because I think it's an interesting conversation that we're not going to have completely today, but at some point probably during the summer that you and I need to have. I don't want to hear another coach, not one, talk to me about portal windows, NIL, none of it, when you're going to cut players because you can, why can you have your cake and then eat it too? But the players can't. So I, I'm just right. going to say when you're cutting players, it's not the player's fault that you misevaluated. It's not your, it's not your fault that you have a position group that's really bad and you have to cut players that need and could be developed and could eventually right. be role players or play here. It, and I'm not just talking about LSU. This isn't an LSU centric thing, yeah. Carter. This is going all across the all, all across the country right now. So all I'm going to say is, we have a lot of coaches that are being very hypocritical when it comes to processing players out of their program and then going in the portal. And they're saying, "Oh, we got to fix this." No, you don't need it. You don't want this fixed because you all have needs and you're trying to fill those needs. And a lot of teams have needs in the interior of the defensive tackle. Um, yeah. What's interesting to me 
is, Carter, that there has been other position groups that have said that LSU has contacted them. Are you surprised that other position groups and other players at other positions have been contacted? Running back, corner, and wide receiver, which I thought was a little crazy. Not uh, wide receiver, yes, but everything else, not really. I mean, you got to build your roster the best you could build it. And look, there's a whole lot of this going on, whether it's through players and player agents and and whatnot. Honestly, Blake, and this is a little bit more macro uh, off to the side of your topic. I do think one thing, and and we we both have had our say about Pete Dammel, but he did do something a few weeks ago that were very interesting. I know you saw this. Oregon State running back Martinez entered the portal. I thought it was very interesting that Dammel included how much NIL money he was making. Okay, In, in, in an official tweet from his account. He said Oregon State was paying him $400,000, right? Mm -hmm. The bottom line with NIL and reporting and, and all of that, we really don't know full motives unless we know the specific dollar amount. What's attached. your thoughts on Thamel? Very quickly, what was your thoughts on him tweeting that? I, I thought it was interesting that it was the, just this one player. And, you know, th there's journalistic standards that you have to go by if you're – like you have to know that he was making that amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like there was an Oregon State source that were, was very perturbed by that, and they had they sent him bank statements saying how much he was making because I've not seen another reporter do that. And what I think is going to be interesting, Blake, especially with transfer portal guys, the way the way it was explained to me um, is portal guys are a little bit more about business uh, if, if if they are coveted. Very, right? All the bullshit gets cut from kids that are in the portal. Right, because, you know, they've been through the whole high school recruiting thing. It's don't not care, they school. don't care about it. They want to get right. to a school, make money, get developed, go to league. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys are older, and they have played at least three years of college ball. If they were good enough to be in the league by now, they would have done it. So they're looking to get paid because they're probably thinking to themselves, maybe I'm not good enough to make the NFL. Let me get a payday before uh, before I have to go try out for the CFL or, or UFL. It's a select few like Walter Nolan. I think Dominic Williams right. is another. I mean, a uh, first team all big 12. I think the kid can play. I think some, uh, Simeon Barrow is another one. Yeah. Who, you know, and I, I do feel confident about him and LSU at the current moment. Let's see if they can close. But I, I do think – so to get it to your point about that, I do think that that's very interesting that Thamel tweeted that out. But I think Thamel got that from an agent, and yeah. I think he was asked to put it in there because, you know, agents are making 10% of what these kids are making on NIL. And, look, I've dealt with them in, in my NIL dealings, and they're horrible to deal with, and I tell players every time. You can have your agent in here. They can read over stuff. But if they start calling me demanding more, demanding this, demanding that, we're out. And I'm not playing that game, okay? I will keep. I can keep quiet. You can keep quiet. And what all we're doing and how you're helping the show, how, you know, I call them interns, all right? But the, the bottom line is the sport is going to – Carter, we have more defensive tackles in the portal right now. How do you – why do you think that that is? Because those agents are coming out there saying there's high demand for them. And everybody knows that there's high demand for yeah, them. Yeah. You're out for two. I mean, Texas got the kid from Arizona today, which I think they want one more. But it shows you they want to go after Dominic Williams, and that's about it. So it opens the door for Barrow and C.J. West for you. So right. I, I do think that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we don't know. And I will tell you this. It's becoming more like baseball. Let me explain. Oh, they, Baseball has – in college baseball has – those guys have agents from their junior, junior, senior year in high school. And those agents will call a guy – I'm just going to use Jay Johnson because we cover LSU. Those guys will call Jay. Jay they will say, hey, my guy wants to move. He, he wants this amount. Can that be – is that doable? That's how it works, and that's how it's always worked in college baseball, okay? It's translating to college football. What college coaches in football should be doing is talking to every baseball coach that they have on campus 
and saying, how did you deal with this? Interesting. And how should I deal with it? Because Jay Johnson has two decades worth of doing this kind of stuff where I don't know if Brian Kelly really does. I, d- I didn't know that was the case in college. I oh, really brother. It is. It is. I mean, like, for example, Scott, Scott Boris is Paxton Clean's agent. The big time agent, really? Scott Boris. No way. Paxton yes. Clean? So oh, that's crazy. That's, uh, that deal was probably signed when he was a junior and senior in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, what's those conversations like? I mean, I've done some NIL deals with some baseball players, and it's like I got to go to the agent before I talk to the kid. I'm like, I don't want to sign you. I'm trying to sign the kid. I, this is something that we're just trying to do to help. So you're right. trying to make money for your own self because you've got a wife and kids. I don't, I'm not worried about your wife and kids. I'm worried about the kid. So I do think that that is something I think in the summer we will talk about more, but it's a great conversation piece. What, what, one more thing on the defense alignment thing, though. Okay. L- LSU's got to do a better job of, of whatever the case may be, whether it's portal, high school recruiting. They, they need to just build better depth. I know it's harder now with the portal where if you are a backup, you can immediately go somewhere and, and play really well. But really the last defense LSU had that was truly deep was, was the 2019 defense, right? They were truly two and a half, three deep at pretty pretty much every position, especially in the trenches. So um, I, I, I hope uh the fighting Blake Bakers of the world are are going to get us uh back to that point because they, they could they desperately need to get back there. Thank you, Derwin, for the super chat. If you have a question, you can throw them in here. Yeah. Uh, did you see this, Bullfrog? Lock uh oh the, the Michigan State DT, he believes it. Does he have yeah, sources? It's not the real it's not the real bullfrog, but I wanted to yeah, get yeah, 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 yeah. But but what um I feel confident. I, look, I'll say it like this. I feel confident where they are, but the kid's going to be here until tomorrow. So hold your horses for just a minute on where that where that's going at the current moment. Carter, did you watch USC spring game by chance? I did not. No, I did okay. see Arch Manning though. All right. Well, let's let's talk about some some teams that you did see. What did you think about this weekend and other teams' spring games? Yeah, I, I I think Connor Wigman is is really good. I I you really thought do. That they were, you thought A and M was was good offensively? No, I I I just I don't I don't care what I saw in the spring game. I saw them score Noah Thomas on a double double China seven concept. My favorite <laughs> my favorite play in the red zone the the Mason Taylor touchdown versus Alabama the first one not not the second one or not the two point but You're uh, about the corner route the slant yeah, slant yeah, corner right? I I. T- t- I know, I know, it was kind of clunky for AM. I, for some reason, just can't get over Connor Wigman. I just think, I just think he's going to be good next year. Um, I, I think AM's offense has such a nasty stink to it because it is AM's offense, and they lost Evan Stewart and Colin Klein going into the SEC. I, I think offensively, they're they're going to be so much better. I don't know why. I don't know. I think it's kind of a gut thing. I think it's kind of my eyes thing because there's just not a whole lot of Connor Wigman stuff out there. Uh-huh. I I just think he's he's uh, a little underrated, and I will also say this, Blake. I, I I'm a huge Peyton Manning fan, so anything Manning, I'm going to be a fan of, right? I I don't know how far off Arch is from Quinn Ewers. I'm just not a big Quinn. I've never been a big Quinn Ewers guy. All right, let me let me address the first thing. First things first on Texas A and M. I think Colin Klein needs to learn quick, fast, and in a hurry. You don't need to go east and west in the SEC. You better start getting north and south. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to ultimately be his play calling, but, buddy, if you start going sideline to sideline, good luck because you're not going to win shit here. All right, that's number one. Okay. I do like Weigman, but I thought they were so clunky I couldn't get a good read off of him to see how – just good he was right now. You know, like I thought because they were so clunky, he didn't do some bad things. He had some really good throws, though. The thing about Arch, and I said this last night on Rafino and Joe show, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, okay? The thing with me about Arch was, and always was, he wasn't ready physically, right? Like he, I mean, look, he's he's got to have put on 40 pounds. The kid yeah. might have been 180 in high school, and he's about 220 now. So, I think that he's physically gifted. Now, he wasn't running against the ones. 
but I've never understood the Quinn Ewers hype ever. Now, what people will say, Carter, is he was a 69% completion percentage guy, was Ewers, but the you're a senior and you're making that throw on a pick six to a D lineman. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, I mean, his decision making is so horrible that I, I don't I agree with you. I don't know if there's not a, a battle. Now, it's a good thing because look, that whole quarterback room is really good in Texas. You could say a lot of things about Texas. That quarterback room being bad is not one of them. Right. I'm with you. I will I will I will. Yeah, I mean, some of those arch throws were wide open. It's a good point going up against a backup unit. What's very interesting about, interesting about Quinn Ewers is he's always played well versus Alabama, but there's a reason, right? Sark knows Saban, right? right. Sark, I don't care what Texas says. They, they they planned and really coached up that game for a while. And I thought Quinn Ewers' game versus Washington was very underrated. It was just Michael Penix played the best game of his life in that game versus Texas. Remember, uh, remember you saying that game because I'm going to come back to it. Yeah, so I, I think Quinn did fan, played NFL level good in in both those games, but once again, those games he had a lot of time to prepare for those games, week to week consistency. That's why you know I'm not a big AD Mitchell guy in this next draft, but it's amazing how many times he missed AD Mitchell uh, this past year with bad throws. So I, I. I'm, I'm fading Quinn Ewers uh, going into this next season, even though he does have, you know, some ridiculous weapons to throw the ball to. Um, Their secondary is not good. It wasn't good last year, and I got obliterated for saying it wasn't good last year. They're not good again. Texas is going to come in this league thinking that they can run some things, and if they're sec – I'm telling you, man, look, let me give you an example. I know you're going to hate this. They play Kentucky. Good luck. You can't, you can't have games like you did last year versus Houston. You can't have games like you did last year versus Kansas because when you do, you're going to get that ass beat. Let's go. Huh? Uh, Carter, uh, they, they uh, can't. Because I love it. Houston is closer to Vandy than Houston is to Kentucky. From a talent perspective. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I I like Kentucky. Barry and Brown's very underrated. I like them. Very be careful. All right, a couple more before we get out, get you out of here. Um, anything going into the offseason that you're monitoring that maybe some people aren't paying attention to? Yeah, Blake, uh, special teams, right? What Do you think we need a punter? I don't know. Like, that's, that's one of those things where you really got to be behind closed doors and looking at every punt. Uh, like every single day. Well, I'll tell you, I was there all, all four, three Saturdays in the spring game. They don't have a good punter. Yeah, like I, I've I've heard the same as well, Blake. It, I, I want it to work out. I love North Louisiana prospects, but man, it's I I think they need to go get someone. I'll say it. I think I think they do. What about the uh, Arkansas punter? I mean, are you familiar with him and him going into the portal? Not really. I think his name's Max Fletcher or something like that. I I don't I don't That's know. The most punter accountant name of all time. <laughs> uh, uh, the kid should be an accountant, Max but, Fletcher. But the the issue that I think a lot of LSU fans are going to struggle with is that we didn't punt a whole lot last year. So you kind of forgot a little bit about Jay Bramblett, who was really good, you know, at at LSU. It wasn't right. Donnie Jones per se, but I mean, it was it was really good. Um, I I think that's a, a lower key story because. LSU's offense is just not going to be as good as last year's offense. It's asking a lot. So just in theory, you're going to punt more. You, 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 you got to have better quality punting than what you did in the spring because every last bit of field position is going to help uh, a new D.C. and a new defensive coaching staff. So I think that is a little bit under the radar just because we didn't punt a whole lot last year, and it's not on the top of fans' minds. Might not – better hope we don't punt a lot this year if we don't take somebody. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. All right. Transitioning, but one last question before we That's get you out of here. Um, three Tigers are going to be drafted in the first round. Where do you think Malik – we talked about Jaden. Where do you think Malik and BTJ goes? Yeah, so, Blake, I know, I know you have a betting sponsor, Bet Online. I, I, The NFL draft market is one where you can really – really capitalize on okay so once again always bet responsibly all that stuff but 
One of my favorite long shot plays is Malik Neighbors going number four overall to the Arizona Cardinals over Marvin Harrison. Um, I think general consensus. So I, I've been Malik over Marvin for a very long time. Blake. A long time. I'll give you a that. Long, a, long, a long time. And I, I, it's not just an LSU fan thing. There was one LSU player I faded a long time ago that got me in a lot of trouble, and he's one of the most famous ones. You know who it is, Blake. And I was right about fading him to a certain degree. So I, I will I will say something about an LSU player that doesn't translate all that well to the NFL. I think NFL teams are starting to realize Malik Neighbors is better than Marvin Harrison. It's not by much. They're my two uh, – actually, Marvin Harrison is number three on my board behind Murphy, the DT out of Texas. Um, I I think Malik will get selected by the Arizona Cardinals, number four wow. overall. Long, like, I, I know everybody's mocking um, Harrison right there, and then the Chargers will be forced to take Harrison at five. You can't pass up on, on Marvin Harrison. Would you I, Would you go – if you're the Chargers, would, I would go Joe Alt. Yeah, but if if you get it, with your wide receiver room being as bad as it is, fair, you you can't pass up Malik or Marvin there. Uh, but that's fair. I, I so, but I don't think the Chargers are on fire about Malik. So I don't think he gets past number six to the Giants. I think BTJ. My, do you want my personal opinion on BTJ? Yeah. Do, okay. No, I, I want you to lie to me. No, okay, but but uh, look. I'm a huge BTJ fan. I I would not select him in in the top half of the first round. I feel this way outside the top three receivers. I would be very hesitant to take any of the other wide receivers because there's so many great wide receivers in this class, and the top three receivers for me are so far away than the from from is the rest. Third of Dunze. Yeah, Adunze. I I think Rome is really good. I do. At first, I didn't believe it, but now I think he's really good. I. I feel really good about BTJ and a few teams though in the middle. I don't think that they're going to pass up on him, even though that's not what I would do. I think he doesn't get past the Bengals at 18. I think the Colts are a very real possibility at 15. And I think there's potentially could be some teams that trade back and potentially BTJ begin to fall because Xavier Worthy has shot up boards with his 4 to 140. We did have, we do have the Adam Schefter report that says A.D. Mitchell will go way higher than what you expect, even though A.D. Mitchell is my biggest fade in the first round out of any of the wide receivers. Mm-hmm. So I, I, the, I'll I, give you my predictions. Jaden Daniels will be a Washington commander. Malik Neighbors will be an Arizona card. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with my long shot play there. But if not there, he'll be a giant. And I believe Brian Thomas Jr. will be an Indianapolis cold or a Cincinnati Bengal, even though that's not what I would do. I will say BTJ to the Colts would be an absolute perfect fit because Anthony Richardson's a deep ball thrower and they need a true deep weapon. And I think the Colts fit perfectly for him. The only thing I'm going to say, because I'm not, you know, you know me, I'm not an NFL draft guy uh, in, in reference to following it all the, all the time. If Brock Bowers is at 14, I know the Saints need to tackle. You do not pass up Brock Bowers. Ooh. You, you, you like Bowers that much? I'm all I he look, I can't say this because the kid's a tight end. Carter, you don't pass him on, up on him. Oh, putting the chips in the middle on oh, oh, Brock. Brock Bowers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, do you think he's a good enough inline blocker to be a tight end and play it depends, in it depends on it depends on who he's up against. A uh, defensive end, I think he's going to need help with combo. The problem with him, okay, is if you fade to him in a running game situation and you stack up against him, teams are going to hit you with other things on the opposite side that burn your ass. So, for example, if you got to walk a, a safety down to him to get press on him, it's the Gronk thing. And I, I will say this until I'm blue in the face. The first three years in the league, Gronk was a, was not a great blocker. He was a good blocker, not a great blocker. Okay. But because he worked on it, he became a great blocker. I'm taking Brock Bowers at 14. I know you need to tackle. But do not pass on Brock Bowers. He will make you look like a damn fool. However, wow. if, he does, if he does get missed by the Saints and he goes to Cincinnati, it's over. Oh, so you like that? You like that fit? 
over with the with the Bengals. I love it. What? Okay, so from a Saints perspective, what what? So Bowers. I think they over, need to tackle more than anything because they yeah. mismanaged the position. And I think that they're going to go tackle, but I think that they're going to screw this up like they have done the last couple of seasons. They're going to screw it up, go with some no lower name, the offensive tackle that they fell in love with that quite honestly is Rudy Pooh. And if they don't go with Brock Bowers, the entire front office needs to be fired. You heard it here first. Because when he goes to Cincinnati and he's snapping necks and cashing checks, it's the fucking Catalina wine mixer. I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> I think, okay. It, I Fashanu is getting the one the, the offensive tackle from Penn State. That's who the Saints are being mocked to the most. 